YouTube, my name is Ashley, and I wanted to do a small tutorial on how to raise mealworms. I've been YouTubing it for quite a while, um, and I've found a few things that work, I found a few things that didn't work, and I found a couple things that nobody's doing that work really well. So I kind of wanted to just make my own video. Um, mealworms are a really good source of food for lizards, birds, you know, small amphibians. I have two baby crested geckos, a adult crested gecko, and a leopard gecko, and also a bird. So I go through a lot of mealworms, and it gets kind of pricey after a while. So I decided to start my own colony. Um, there's uh, four stages to mealworms. You got the egg, the uh, mealworm, the pupae, and then the beetle. Uh, the mealworms I keep in the bottom drawer. And I have a carrot in here. Uh, sometimes I rotate out between carrots, potatoes, and celery. Um, and I'll throw grapes or strawberries in there occasionally. Usually I just use them as a, I don't know, compost pile, I guess. You know, if there's something that's starting to go bad in my fridge that I'm not going to eat, I'll just throw it in here for them. Uh, but you can get like a single, if you don't want to buy a bunch of carrots, because they do go bad after a while. Um... You know, usually at Kroger's or, or Meyer or wherever you shop, you know, in the produce section, they'll have, like, one really big carrot for sale. Um, I got a really big one for 49 cents, and, you know, um, it's it's pretty cool. Um, and then, uh, well, let's see. The uh, mealworms are in here. Um, now, this guy here isn't dead. He's, uh, he's getting ready to pupate. And when they get ready to pupate, they kind of curl up into that little C. Uh, so those guys there are, are definitely getting ready to move on to the next stage. Uh, but we got some little active ones down here. There's an active mealworm. Well, he was active. He's playing dead. And there he goes. <laughs> but uh, when uh, they pupate, uh, they pupate in here. And I... I have kept the actual container that I bought the mealworms in because, it, if it, as you can see, it has all these holes around the top, so it's pretty good ventilation, and it just snaps right off. But once they start pupating, I will put them in here, and there's a beetle. Uh, let's see. Let's go with this one, and this one here shows you... Okay. This white guy... He, I just picked out this morning. So, as you see, they're pretty white. Um, and you can always tell which ones are the fresh ones, because they're almost clear sometimes, but they don't do anything. They'll wiggle a little bit here and there. And this guy here is probably going to hatch today. Uh, as you can see on the back side, you can see the little legs start to form the eyeballs, and he's pretty active, so he's definitely going to turn into a beetle today. Now this guy here, um, I've noticed, uh, and I kind of feel bad about it, when I take some of the beetles out, I have grabbed them a little too hard, and now their adult shell is dented. So I usually try and leave them in here, or I'll let them crawl up on my finger so I can grab them out. But there's a fresh beetle. He just hatched this morning. He's still a little white. His legs aren't really working yet. But um, usually when they hatch, I'll bring them up here to the beetle container and drop them in. And I'll just leave these guys in here and let them do what they do. Usually it takes... It's, it's different between pupae to pupae because I've had one that's hatched within a week of molting or not molting, but uh, morphing, and I've had one that's been there for a month before it morphed into a beetle, so it, it kind of just changes with, I guess, temperature and humidity, too. And uh, let's see, let's go up here to the beetles. I have them in the top drawer, and they don't like a lot of light, so there's tape on here for two reasons. One is to block out a little bit of light, and the other is because if you look down here in the bottom, I have screen. And this is a very tiny little thing. I mean, you see my hand right here. It's one of those tiny little mini three-drawer ones. I don't have that big of a colony yet, and I have it on my desk. So it takes up, like, very little room. Now, this is uh, the beetles. And uh, here's what I was talking about. I have not seen this 
in another video, but I highly, highly recommend that people try this because it works so well. Actually, you can see it right now. Uh, beetles are laying eggs on fabric. This is an old wife beater that my boyfriend gave me. Um, I just cut it up in little squares and I throw it down there. They literally will lay hundreds of eggs on it within a day. The only problem I have noticed is they the eggs are starting to get chewed on, which you know is going to happen regardless whether you're using the you know the fabric or the oatmeal. Um, but um, what I'll do is as soon as I'll leave it in there for maybe like a day because there's two laying eggs right there. Um, there's a bunch in the back laying eggs and doing the dirty. So it's a growing colony. Um, and then when I feel like there's eggs just being eaten and not as many being laid, like if I just put this in there, but um, if there were no beetles on there but a bunch of eggs, I'd probably just go ahead and take it out. And I put it in here. Um, there's oatmeal on the bottom, and that's it. And I just open the top piece here, drop the fabric in, just put it over there on the other side of my dresser. Um, once they start hatching, which usually takes anywhere from 25 to 40 days. A lot of places on the internet say 30, but I've, I've been tracking it, and I've had an egg hatch in 24 days. So, uh, But that I've never had another one hatch that early, so obviously, you know, it, it just ranges. Same thing with the morph. But uh, in there, they won't get eaten, so they can uh, hatch, and it's actually turned out really well. I have a lot of very small millworms, very, very small millworms in there. Um, but in here, with the beetles, when they lay the eggs that I, you know, I can't get out, you know, that are like on the oatmeal, once they hatch, they fall through the screen. And they'll fall down in here into my nursery. And the only thing I have in here, I have a little bit of wheat bran uh, mixed with some oatmeal. I just kind of ground it up uh, to make this really fine powder. And I have a carrot in here as well. Oh, uh, no mealworms on that. Let's see if I can find them. Yeah, there's, I don't know if you can see them. But there, I mean, you can see the wheat bran moving. But there are hundreds of small little babies. And these guys are tiny. Uh, let me pick one up here. Okay, look how tiny that is. That's small. That's smaller than my fingernail. And I have seen them half that size. I have seen them to the point where they are white. And I can't even, you know, grab them. But I have hundreds of those in here. So obviously this whole screen on the bottom is really working. Um, I'm doing two different ways to catch the eggs or harvest the eggs. Because a lot of my beetles were eating all the eggs in there. And it wasn't producing fast enough. You know, I have four hungry lizards <laughs> and a bird. So I need mealworms to, you know, keep replenishing. So that's the whole setup itself. And like I said, it's not that big. Um, now, as far as the moisture goes, you definitely, at least every other day, want to give them a fresh carrot. Um, well, carrots you can leave in there a little bit longer. They don't really mold that fast. Um, potatoes mold kind of fast. And so do apples. I've had a lot of bad luck with apples. They mold really quick. And they can also bring attract gnats and mites into your bedding as well. Uh, the bedding I use is just regular oats. Um, I use whole grain. Um, just provides more oatmeal, like oats, than the actual just plain white one. Uh, very cheap. Uh, Walmart, I think I paid under $2, like $1.84 for this whole big container. And I've had it for about two months, and it's just about halfway gone so you don't have to use that much and also for moisture a lot of people are using this don't do not use this um, you can either do the Zilla or the Faulkner's but don't use it um, I've noticed it dries extremely quick because you have oatmeal or wheat bran you know or sawdust whatever you're using in your mealworm thing and it, it gets hard and it's hard to sift out, so it also makes your, your bedding extremely dirty pretty quick. Um, if you do want to use it, um, it's no bad thing for your your beetles. Um, I would give it to your beetles, but I wouldn't necessarily give it to the mealworms. 
that's just my personal preference. I mean, whatever works for you guys. Uh, but use like a, a lid like this and just dump a little bit on here and then I can crawl up on there. Um, supplements. There's two ways you can go. Um, you can use the Zila Gut Load Cricket and Insect Food, uh, which is also good since they are being fed to lizards. Uh, this has got the stuff in it for my lizards and is also good for them. It, it, it helps them be able to molt better and, you know, just give them a little bit more nutrients. Or you can use the Reptile Life. A lot of people use this. But, um, considering I wasn't sure which one to use, I took a Ziploc bag and I just mixed some. You know, I just uh, put a little spoonful of each in there, shook it up real well, and I'll just dump that down on the substrate. You know, um, that way it's got a mixture of both. But, uh, yeah, so that's how I set up my colony, and it works really well. It's, it's really working because... I can't even show you how many small mealworms are in there. There's so many, and you can't see them. So, um, but I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend everybody try the fabric. Just try it, because they'll not only do what they're doing, mate on it, but they'll do what these guys are doing over here and start laying eggs. And the females can lay, I think I read somewhere, anywhere from like, 20 something to up to 100 something eggs a day so that's a lot of eggs and there's a lot of beetles in there and there's going to be a lot more beetles so I'm trying to figure out ways to get the eggs straight over onto here because in here they're not going to get eaten they're not going to get you know chewed on the eggs can actually hatch I highly doubt you'll be able to see an egg they are super small but Right in the middle of the tip of my finger. Yeah. You can barely see it. Let me uh, get a pen here. Okay. Right here is an egg. That's how small they are. You can barely see it. Like it's at the very tip of that. You can see the, the shadow, but that is like super small. So, obviously they're really good meals for the beetles. So doing it this way, they, uh, they'll get a chance to hatch and, and grow up without getting munched on. So that's my mealworm colony. Um, just experiment. That's all I did. I experimented. I watched videos. I searched up stuff on the internet. I've talked to other people who are doing mealworm farms. You know, as you see, it doesn't take up a lot of space at all. Um, most people know how big this container is. And there. I mean, it's super... That container I have was like six bucks at the dollar store. You can get one just the same size or a little bit bigger at Walmart for just a little bit more. Um, this is still a Sterilite, so go to the dollar store if you can. But a uh, grand total to get this whole colony started, I think, was about 20 bucks. Um, I already have all this, obviously, because I have lizards. Um, the only thing I had to go out and buy was the container, the oatmeal... Um, and then I have to keep up with the carrots. Like I said earlier, most of the time I just throw in something out of my fridge that is a produce that I is going bad and I won't eat. Um, but yeah, 20 bucks to get it started. And I have literally saved probably anywhere up to around $100. I was spending $20 a week on just mealworms, not counting crickets. I still have to buy crickets because I tried the whole cricket farm thing. And yeah, no, I'm good on that. It's too noisy, too stinky, and just too much hassle. It's actually kind of hard. But, um, yeah, it's very cheap. And this right here is probably as many mealworms as you would buy in one of these. And this here costs me, like, $2. So, and I would have to buy a lot of these. So, you know, experiment. Definitely try the cloth. I really recommend the cloth. But, um, I think I'll let you guys go because I'm, I'm kind of just rambling now, so... But yeah, uh, if you have any other suggestions, maybe something that you're doing that I'm not, that's really working for you, uh, please leave it in the comments below because I, I like to change things up a lot and, and try and find the best way to do something. So, but anyways, alright, happy lizard owning or whatever kind of animal you have to feed these guys to, and uh, like the video. Thanks guys.